Millions of Americans were suddenly disturbed when an unidentified object was spotted hovering over the city of Billings in Montana. Montana is home to some of America's nuclear missile silos. Initially thought to be a UFO, the object was soon identified as a Chinese spy balloon, causing widespread confusion, panic, and concern. As the balloon remained in American airspace for at least seven days before it was finally shot down, questions arose about the true nature of its mission and the potential threat that it posed. Spy balloons have a controversial history with their use dating back to ancient times, but in the modern era their deployment has often been associated with espionage and military reconnaissance, raising questions about the ethics of such activities. With tensions already high between the United States and China, the balloon incident has added fuel to the fire, with some speculating that it could be a prelude to a full-blown conflict. In this video, we'll explore the history of spy balloons, their controversial nature, and the potential outcome of China's actions, including the possibility of war. The question on everyone's mind is, what does China's spy balloon mean for the future of international relations and global security? If such ideas fascinate you and you're interested in finding out more about the latest developments in recent conflicts and the sorts of technologies used in them, remember to subscribe to the channel. So before we delve deeper into the issue itself, we need to know what both sides have said. President Joe Biden issued the order to shoot down the balloon on February 1st, 2023, three days before it was shot down off the coast of Myrtle Beach in South Carolina by a fighter jet. According to senior American officials as quoted in the Washington Post, this was a discrete program, part of a larger set of programs that are about gaining greater clarity about military facilities in the United States and in a variety of other countries. This was an attempt by China to determine the position of American military installations in the Pacific, according to American sources, causing widespread panic. The Chinese government accused Washington of blowing the issue out of proportion and causing tensions to raise high unnecessarily by shooting down a weather balloon. They expressed regret over the fact that the weather balloon had entered American airspace, but were adamant that the balloon was blown off course by unexpectedly strong winds. China's official statement concluded that the balloon was affected by the westerlies and with limited self-steering capability, the airship deviated far from its planned course. With the statements made by each government now in front of us, let's look at the facts and try to figure out whether this was a weather balloon or a spy balloon. The head of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, General Glenn Van Herk, described the balloon as being 200 feet or 61 meters high, with a surveillance payload the size of a regional passenger jet that likely weighed more than a couple thousand pounds. That is absolutely massive and a size very unusual for a mere weather balloon. Civilians viewing the balloon from the ground described it as a giant white orb as it floated about 60,000 feet or 18,300 meters above the central United States, an altitude roughly twice that of civilian air traffic. According to Jesse Geffen, an account manager at Kmont, an American firm that makes and distributes weather balloons all over the world, a typical weather forecasting balloon carries a radioson payload that weighs around 200 grams. The balloon has a release size of approximately 1.4 meters and bursts at a diameter of about 6 meters, with a flight time of 90 to 120 minutes. While larger balloons may be used for high-altitude photography and videography, the size of the balloon that flew over the United States was much bigger than what would be normally used for photographic payloads. What do you guys think? Was it really a spy balloon or is it a weather balloon like the Chinese government officials insist? Considering that weather balloons typically don't reach such sizes, it's more reasonable then that the balloon did have some sort of surveillance capabilities. But before that, how exactly did we get to this point? How have spy balloons been used typically? The history of spy balloons dates to the 18th century when French and British forces used tethered balloons for reconnaissance purposes during the French Revolutionary Wars. In the 19th century, balloons were used during the American Civil War for surveillance and reconnaissance, and in the early 20th century, both sides in World War I used them for military observation. In the 20th century, spy balloons became more and more sophisticated and were used in a variety of conflicts, including World War II and the Cold War. The US and Soviet Union both used balloons for espionage during the Cold War. 
With the U.S. launching Project Mogul spy balloon program to monitor Soviet nuclear tests, spy balloons have been a regular fixture of modern warfare and can accurately pinpoint locations of strategic interest to the military. In recent times, spy balloons have been more commonly used, especially by China. American officials confirmed that they had already observed Chinese spy balloons enter American airspace briefly at least three times when Donald Trump was in power. A Chinese spy balloon was also spotted in South America a week before the most recent one over Montana. Gradually, the technology became more and more advanced, and we already have an idea of China's capacity in this regard because of papers they've published themselves. China may not have a private firm like Kmont to make its weather balloons for them, but rather they have their official Academy of Sciences Aerospace Information Research Institute, or AIR, that regularly works with the Institute of Optoelectronics, and both have been conducting significant research on stratospheric balloons and published many research papers on their capabilities. Just last September, the AIR announced that they had successfully conducted a trial for a balloon that can reach heights of nearly 30 kilometers and carry a payload up to 1.2 tons. This allows China to develop more and more near-space technologies. But the question, very rightly so, on everyone's minds, especially after the introduction of satellite imagery, is why spy balloons are even necessary when we can already technically see most of the world using satellites. And those people are right in thinking this. But there's more to spying on other countries than just using tools available to any government in the world. The most commonly used method for spying from overhead is through the use of satellites. There are two types of satellites in orbit for imaging and photography. The first type is low Earth orbit, which is closer to the Earth and provides clearer images, but these satellites move around the Earth quickly and can only take photographs for a short period. The second type is a geosynchronous orbit, which is farther away but provides continuous imaging of the same area. This persistence is what allows for clearer and continuous imaging of any given area. While satellites are the preferred method for spying from above, balloons have advantages that make them an effective alternative. Balloons are much closer to the ground than satellites, which allows for even clearer images. Additionally, since balloons move more slowly, they also have a degree of persistence. China's recent actions in flying spy balloons over American soil, including over Montana, the location of many of the country's nuclear missiles, could be viewed as a test of the United States' response capabilities. By conducting such missions, China may be trying to gauge how the U.S. will react to its provocative behavior, especially given the current tensions over Taiwan. The spy balloon incident can also be interpreted as a warning to the U.S., which has conducted surveillance missions in the South China Sea to monitor China's military activities and show support for Taiwan. China may be attempting to send a message to the U.S., indicating that it too is capable of conducting surveillance operations and that it will not hesitate to do so if necessary. The incident has raised concerns about the potential for a military confrontation between the two superpowers, with both sides taking aggressive postures that could escalate into a serious conflict. The recent transgressions by China, including the flying of a spy balloon over the U.S. to gather information on their military capabilities in the Pacific Ocean, have led to speculations of a possible full-blown conflict between the two superpowers. The U.S. response of shooting down the balloon only adds to the tensions between the two nations. The possibility of war with China over Taiwan has been a topic of discussion for many years, with recent events only adding fuel to the fire. With China's continued efforts to assert its dominance in the region and the United States' commitment to defend Taiwan, the likelihood of a conflict cannot be ignored. In war game scenarios, the U.S. has repeatedly found itself in a challenging position. China's military capabilities have grown significantly in recent years, and its advanced missile systems and other high-tech weaponry pose a serious threat to U.S. forces in the region. The terrain in Taiwan also poses a significant challenge, with narrow waterways and heavily populated urban areas making it difficult to navigate and operate effectively. In such scenarios, the U.S. would be forced to fight a defensive war, protecting Taiwan and its assets from an aggressive Chinese military. The probable outcomes of a conflict between the U.S. and China over Taiwan are difficult to predict. 
The consequences of such a conflict would be catastrophic, with both sides suffering significant losses in terms of human life and infrastructure. The U.S. military would likely suffer heavy casualties and would need to rely on its technological superiority to gain an advantage over the Chinese military. The Chinese military, on the other hand, would have to deal with a strong U.S. presence in the region and the risk of escalation to a full-blown war. Ultimately, a conflict between the two superpowers would have far-reaching implications for the entire world, with both sides facing the risk of economic and political instability in the aftermath of a war. Let us also not forget that both nations possess nuclear weapons. Considering that the United States is already in a conflict with Russia and already engaged in a literal proxy war in Ukraine right now, a potential conflict with another nuclear power may not be in its best interest right now. In conclusion, the recent spy balloon incident in the United States has raised concerns about the ethics of military reconnaissance and espionage. While the Chinese government claims it was a weather balloon, evidence suggests that it was a sophisticated spy balloon with surveillance capabilities. Spy balloons have a long history and countries like China have been actively researching and developing new technologies to enhance their reconnaissance abilities. It raises the question of whether the use of spy balloons is ethical and necessary, especially in a world where satellite imagery is widely available. But even more than that, are we potentially seeing an evolution in the trade war that already existed between China and the United States of America? Tensions in the international community are already high considering Russia's intervention into Ukraine, and the world was united in its condemnation of Russia's actions. However, in the middle of being such an active participant in the effort against Russia, the Chinese government's provocative actions might lead to even more chaos. If you liked the video and want to follow the developments around this topic, remember to like and leave a comment.